Hello again everyone, Vortex259 here. Welcome back to Let's Play Dragon Warrior 3 for the Game Boy Color. And once again, we meet at the entrance of the Metal Master's house. I've earned those next five tiny metals I need to turn in to obtain the Sacred Bikini, so I thought I'd start this video by doing so. Now I believe at the end of the previous video I found a couple of tiny metals on the Call of Pachisi track, so that should have taken my total up to 97. Let's see if that's the case. Yep, looks like the total I have brought him so far is 97. Since I've brought him 95, that is going to earn me the sacred bikini, which I will never use because men don't wear bikinis, or at least most don't. <laughs> at least nobody in my party does. So, okay, so the total I brought him now is 97. When the total reaches an even 100, I will be rewarded with the gold pass. So I only need to find three more tiny metals in the game. And uh, don't worry, I think uh, there's 10 extra tiny metals scattered throughout uh, the world of Dragon Warrior 3 for a total of 110 if you don't happen to find the even 100. I might have actually left a couple of tiny metals off during my entire quest up here, so uh, if I did that I apologize, but uh, we will be finding three more tiny metals before the end of this LP. And speaking of nearing the end of the LP, it is time for us to go bring justice to Zoma. There's only one more task we need to perform, and that is go turn in the rain staff and the sunstone to make the rainbow drop. So what do you say we go do that now? I'm just going to exit out of here. We'll just get out of this dark, damp well. And once we reach the outside, let's cast the return spell. And we are going to go back to the village of Call. Oop, nearly passed it there. There we go. What we're going to do is get in our ship and start sailing down to the south. And let's see here. Where's my handy dandy pointer? This will work. The Sacred Shrine is the next place we want to visit, and it is located on this island. Now, you would think that you could just get in your ship and sail due north and get there in a hurry, but not so in the Dark World. There are actually boundaries in the sea in the Dark World, so we're going to have to go the long way around. So let's go get on our ship and start heading to the east and then eventually to the south. And by the way, I now have the ultimate whip that I obtained at the end of the Cole Pachisi track. Have that equipped on Hero and it is an awesome weapon. Does a lot of damage to uh, one group of enemies. Okay, let's find the ship. Uh, should be just west of here. There it is. And we're going to sail up and around, so here we go for the long haul. There's the Tower of Rubus. So we'll just sail a little ways east of here, and then when we can turn south, we will. Here we go. Just keep following the coastline. Let's take a look and see how close we're getting here. Well, I've still got a ways to go, but I'm filling in a little bit of the coastline on my map. Still got a lot of gray area on the map I need to fill in. I don't know if I'm going to do that or not before we go into Zoma's castle. It's a lot of ground to cover. Sailing away. Kind of reminds me of that stick song, Sailing Away. You know, that'd be a good song to play in the background while you're in the ship. Don't think the designers could do that, though. Probably be some sort of copyright issue with that. <laughs> Is this my island I'm looking for? Yep, looks like we have finally arrived. So let's get off of our ship. And the Sacred Shrine should be just up ahead. And that was a battle with a gold man that I defeated and obtained a lot of gill from him. Okay, now we can go inside the shrine. Got the shrine music playing here, and there is a priest with a treasure chest behind him. Let's talk to the priest. He says, this is the sacred shrine. Ah, you're here at last. The rain and sun shall be joined. So we give him our rain staff and our sunstone, and the rain and sun meet and combine to form the rainbow drop. So we get the rainbow drop, and with the rainbow drop, we're going to be able to create a bridge. Now, hey, what about that treasure chest behind the priest? How do we get there with those 
Tombstone's in the way. Let's talk to him. He says, there is nothing here for you. Go. What? The treasure chest behind me? It is empty now. Don't fret over it. Oh, okay. So the priest stole the loot for himself. Shame on him. Well, if we check under the cross, we'll get a consolation prize. We'll find a tiny metal there. There's tiny metal number 98. Two more to go to get the gold pass. All right, so we have the rainbow drop, which means we can now reach Zoma's castle. But to get there, what I'm going to have to do is go back to the village of Rimildar. So let's cast return again. And return to Rimildar. There we go. Up and away, landing next to Rimildar. Let's check that map. What we're going to have to do is walk a little bit of a ways around Rimildar and then up to the northwest. See this area right here? That's the bridge we need to create with the rainbow drop and Zoma's castle is right there. Or I guess it's called Charlotte Castle, for those of you that have played the NES version of Dragon Warrior 1. Alright, let's head that way. Alright, some monsters on the way, maybe a few metabols if we're lucky. No metabols in that battle, that was just some Darth Bears. Alright, let's turn north here. And continuing north, not for very long though, before we turn a little west. Well, what say we kill a metabol here? That's the only monster left, and Matt has become a dragon, and he fries him. All right, love killing those little metal monsters. 11,905 experience points, 365 gold, and Pete is going to be promoted to level 40. How cool is that? No monster metal, though. I've been looking for that metabol monster metal for a while, and just can't seem to get it. Those little boogers are hard to get, much less the metals from them. Okay, looks like we have arrived at our destination here. Notice there is a gap between this continent and the little island or continent, if you will, to the west. But now that we have the rainbow drop in our possession, we can take care of that little problem. So let's just have Hero use the rainbow drop. Hero's rainbow drop was held aloft. And guess what? We're going to form a rainbow at midnight. There you go. That's the purpose of the rainbow drop. It somehow miraculously forms a bridge. I don't know why Hero and his friends just couldn't have got some of those guys that were busy digging a rock tunnel to come build a small bridge. You'd think they'd rather do that than dig through that tunnel, but <laughs> oh well. Anyway, let's cross the bridge here. Go through the deserts, through some mountains. All right, let's continue onward. Now, if you're fortunate enough to have a mage or a sage in your party, you can cast Step Guard to avoid damage. Right here. Through the Poisonous Marsh. So I think I will take the liberty to do so. And one final desert to cross. Now, although I haven't run into it yet, you can run into green dragons through this desert. And they are just like the green dragons you fought in Dragon Warrior 1. The one in the same that was holding Princess Gwalyn hostage. Okay, well looky here folks, we have finally made it. Here we are at Sharlock, the dark fortress of Zoma. What manner of hideous beasts await inside? Has Hero's father Ortega somehow made it inside ahead of him? And will Hero and his friends be able to confront and defeat Zoma and restore peace back into the land? Well, you can find out in the upcoming final episodes of Let's Play Dragon Warrior 3 for the Game Boy Color. This is Vortex259. Thank you very much for watching today. We'll see you again next time.